Howdy folks, Greyhawk 4x4 coming at you again, your resident vintage gamer, and I am officially on vacation. And I know that that's a, it's a weird thing to say, at this what's, what's happening right now uh, in the land, to say that you're on vacation because you can't go anywhere. Um, and for most people, they're stuck at home so they're, it's like they're on vacation because they can't go to work. I am the exception. I have been working this whole time. So it was really my choice because I'd already had this vacation planned on the books like months ago. My wife and I, of course, can't go anywhere now, so that the plans have been canceled. However, she was unable to change her vacation time, so she had to take it off. Uh, and... I was faced with, do I go in and continue being one of the essential workers that has to uh, do uh, what needs to be done to keep everything running there at the pool and all that, even though the pool's not open right now, there's still maintenance that has to be done and all that. Do I want to do that, or do I want to still take my vacation time and spend it with the wife at home and do home improvement projects? Uh, the honeydew list, as everybody knows it. Um, so we still have uh, damage that hasn't been. Well, I shouldn't say that. I should. I should change that. We still have repairs from the when we had the water damage in our living room um, that were started by the construction company, but they stopped because of the of this coronavirus, um, and it's just unfinished. So our living room wall is unfinished, and so I'm just going to finish it myself. I'm just going to do it, and when this whole thing's over and they come back, I'm going to be like, I already did it, guys. So charge me whatever it is for what you did, the part you did. I finished it. Um, so the bottom line is I'm on vacation now for, uh, for all next week. So... Um, and I have a ton of vacation time, so I might as well take it and... Uh, stay home and just do this stuff, and that means I can do gaming, I can do videos, I can do my home improvement stuff, and and so yo, excuse me, that is not ice water, that is a gin and tonic, because as I said a couple days ago, I got hit with a gout attack. And one of the main things, culprits, that causes gout is beer, <laughs> unfortunately. So when you have a gout attack, you got to lay off the beer. Because it'll just make it worse and make it last longer and everything else. <laughs> but <laughs> your enterprising vintage gamer here decided to do a little research on the internet. And I thought, I, I, I thought, gin is made from juniper berries. I wonder if juniper berries have any kind of like healing properties or whatever. So I did some research. And if you Google the best thing to drink for gout, gin is what comes up. Because just as I suspected, juniper berries are an anti-inflammatory. And so, and tonic water that goes in your gin and tonic has quinine in it. Which you might say, that sounds familiar because... They're talking about it in the news right now as a possible cure for the coronavirus, the, the hydroquinoquasi, you know, uh, but the end of it is quinine, and it's, it's, a, it's a drug with quinine in it. Quinine is also an anti-inflammatory. So, uh, it's a double anti-inflammatory gin and tonic. So, this is what I will be drinking probably during my whole vacation, and I went to the liquor store today and loaded up on gin, and I went and got a bunch of tonic water, so I'm good to go. And this is my official uh, rocks glass that I like to use, one of them that I like to use, and that is that is Tony's on the pier. That, that depiction there is actually the restaurant slash bar over the water at the Redondo Beach Pier in California, in Redondo Beach. And the story behind these glasses is, these are famous, because Tony's is famous, that restaurant. At the very top 
of the so you go into the restaurant and then there's like a crow's nest bar you go up these spiral stairs and you go up and you're now in this at the top of the restaurant with a 360 degree view of the ocean and the beach and everything with and the bars in the middle with the bartender and then you can sit 360 degrees around that against the window big giant windows and look out and see the beautiful view and everything well they're famous for their Mai Tais and this is what they serve them in are these glasses and if you order a Mai Tai at Tony's you get to keep the glass I have several of these now when they had their I think it was their 50th anniversary of being there it's an old restaurant uh, 50 years they actually did some of those glasses with gold everything though the lettering still black was all done in gold and I did not get one of those my buddy has a couple of them because he went during that anniversary thing so he's actually got the the gold ones so there's a little trivia thing for you if you were if you've never been to Redondo Beach and you get the chance to go after this whole zombie apocalypse thing is over and we can all travel again if you get to go you have to go to Tony's on the pier and get some incredible seafood if that's your thing they have other stuff on the menu but they're known for their seafood obviously and you have to go up to the crow's nest bar and it's all like Hawaiian luau shirts and all that stuff up there tiki lounge type stuff and you have to get a world famous Mai Tai at Tony's you just have to and then you get to keep the glass so anyway so I don't know if you can tell but I am very happy to be on vacation and even though there's not a lot to do at work right now it'll just be nice to be completely away and be able to focus on other stuff so that was a hell of an intro um, this video is going to be about our the, the latest update to our campaign for our D&D campaign and last Friday so this is Friday so it was a week ago today and I wanted to do this video before tonight's session because I don't want to get behind so I want to give an update on what we did last session. And it was the first time we've done a virtual game through Roll20. And our DM was completely new to Roll20, as am I. We do have another person that plays with, a couple people that play with us that were somewhat familiar with it. One of which I think he might be quite familiar with it. But he's not DMing. So the DM is the one that has to really run the game. So our DM had to learn it and all that. And... All of our, you know, we didn't have any trouble with video conference, you know, the video conferencing portion of it. Um, we didn't have to use another third party, you know, we didn't have to use Discord. We thought we might have to use Discord, but we didn't. We just used the integrated one in Roll20 for our video and audio, which worked great. And, of course, then you get the game map and all that, and it shows, you know, you're able to draw, the DMs are able to draw out the map and then put... Um, NPCs and monsters etc there and you all have control over your own tokens for your character so it was a learning curve for us at the very like the first hour to get all the controls down and everything else and then it was like no no big deal really and we actually had a fun we had a fun uh, session um, so our group is still trying to get to Pompidou if you if you want to go back and watch my last video on this, it'll get you caught up. So our group is wanting to get to Pompidou, the elven city. And so we're traveling through, and of course we've had this, this overwhelming or overshadowing evil presence thing that's been going on, you know, throughout. It's been another aspect of the campaign um, where we've been trying to... Um, find this group of necromancers and all that and then there was also the threat of the rumor that there was an evil god trying to bring um, uh, open up portals to send like uh, evil entities demons and stuff like that through the portal Sli slimes and oozes and demons and all that stuff to, to ravage the land and all that so all those threats have been there um, overshadowing everything as as we continue you know, on our quests and stuff like that. Well, this session, boy, did it kind of come to a head to a head, because we were out in the wilderness on our on our way, 
And our magic user has a looted, he had looted, uh, or one of us did, but he has the ring. It's a very special ring. It radiates magic, of course. And it has a swirling, you know, uh, stone and all this stuff. And a, and a, and a, dwim, a dwimmer and all that. And it's just a very unique, very cool looking ring. And the magic users in our town wouldn't even, because we he wanted to get it like, identified to find out what it was and they wouldn't even touch it they didn't want to come near it they're like no we're not screwing with that thing there's something not right with that you know but he decided to put it on and first time he made his saving throw he slept great because it puts him to sleep and then he puts it on second time he put it on he fell asleep and then he did not sleep well he failed his saving throw and he had nightmares and all this stuff all while there's a storm approaching us while this is going on and it's a the most um, the way it was described is the most ominous looking dark clouds dark thunderstorm thunderheads that you've ever seen and it's just coming from every direction like coming right on to 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 culminate upon us and and so it does and as soon as the storm gets engulfs us we all fall asleep and we start having each of us has if it has visions and basically we're having nightmares Mine was of the the abbey that I am having built right now that I'm financing to have built. My cleric is having built. Um, that there was a demon came down and started destroying it, and all, that was my vision. And then each all the characters had their own visions. And then we come to, and we're no longer in the forest. We're in like a desert type area or whatever. And and um, one of the things I got to look at my notes here real quick. Um, once we uh, come to, we all hear um, an ominous voice say, prepare. And uh, then a, um, a, a de we get attacked by demons and um, so we defeat him and we each get these these for lack of a better term, goons that show up and come over to us and t to each of us, they tell our character, I am for you. So we each get like a follower. So this, all this weird stuff's happening and we're in this new land and we don't know what's going on, but there's a plate in the ground that has these geometrical shapes and stuff in it. And we can't do any, we've tried everything. The, the, the rogues have tried their thing. We've tried casting spells on it and it just sitting there and it won't do anything and it looks almost like a you know a, a, a hatch in the ground that we could open to maybe get away or something but we can't do anything with it but it's got all these geometric shapes and all this stuff so we end up we end up going uh, just ahead and we see like a pyramid in the distance and we decide to go investigate that we end up fighting um, some other creatures and I don't remember all that what everything that we fought but we end up um, getting to one of the pyramids and it says speak my name and enter or something like that and we try all this different stuff we try all the obvious stuff you know my name and uh, you know friend you know from like from Lord of the Rings and all you know all this different stuff nothing works but we end up fighting some other creatures and stuff and one of them drops a parchment or something and it has a name on it and that gets us into the, that's what they speak my name and that's the name we have to say. And that gets us in. So we get in and we we have to fight more stuff in there. And at one point, there's a treasure, a, a weird looking treasure chest. And we decide to go to grab it. And of course, uh, we get attacked by an unseen enemy, uh, an invisible enemy. Could be an unseen servant, could be uh, a... Um, I thought it was an unseen so there's another one there's a uh, invisible stalker could be that who knows and we end up successfully fighting it figuring out where it's at and fighting it and all that stuff and we get the chest eventually get the chest open and it has a geometric doohickey in it so we realize oh that's gonna fit in one of the slots in in the plate in the hatch so now and that's kinda I think where we stopped um, so now we understand, that, and we've seen other pyramids out on in the distance and stuff. So now we've pretty much figured it out that 
we're going to have to fight our way to each of these pyramids and probably get names off of the, whatever we fight if we defeat them and then that will get us into the pyramid then we have to fight whatever's in there to get the geometric shape and once we get all the geometric shapes we can go back to the plate and put them all in there and hopefully get the fuck out of here because it, it's just a, a weird spooky goddamn place and it's taking us away from our what our true you know quest is we want to get to, to Pompidou and Maybe we'll get some answers about this whole demo demonic thing and evil presence and uh, the necromancers and all that once we get through out of this plane of existence that we're in right now. And then if we make it to Pompidou, maybe we'll start getting some answers and stuff to start unraveling the bigger mysteries that are going on. So that's kind of a, a quick synopsis of what we, what, what's been going on. Um, Trying to think, I'm gonna make sure I don't uh, want to make sure. And of course, all, by the way, our goons that we each got, you know, that came, that they all got killed. I mean, they were basically meat shields, so they didn't last very long. Um, I think that's it. So, uh, cheers and uh, my next video. It probably won't be the next, it won't be the update from tonight's session. i got a couple other things I want to do beforehand, but we'll figure something out. And, uh, oh, I wanted to thank uh, one of my, it's actually two of them, I think, that are subscribers, uh, the Carter Brothers, who recommended the original Rage on PC. Uh, Rage 2 is out now, which I heard is not very good. But they said the original Rage was actually pretty good, and... They were right. I actually played through the first mission, and it's actually it's actually a lot. It's not ex all what I thought it was going to be, and I'm actually kind of hooked on it. So I'll probably be playing a lot more of that. So we'll talk about some more of that in, an in another video. We'll do like a, a gaming vlog or something like that. Anyway, until then, guys, we'll catch you on the flip side.